Hi, welcome. My name is Joseph Bernard. I'm a new instructor this semester. And what we'll be going over right now is the syllabus, an overview of the course, and kind of what to expect overall in the course. So let's get started. Now, if you can see on your screen, um, there's a copy of the syllabus. And so this is a what they call an accelerated course, right? So we we'll all have to really cram in what we would normally do in 16 weeks into eight weeks. That is hefty. So do not think this is an easy class because uh, we're going to have to do a lot of work very quickly. So this is going to be a very intensive course. Uh, you can do it. I have structured it that you can succeed in this course, but it will take some hard work and dedication. Now take a look at uh, the basic information. Um, no, uh, I will be, I'll try to be online um, sort of office hours in our course chat. And you can find that over here, chat in the uh, Canvas screen. And those will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And that's not the standard time. Now you can email me. Uh, that's you're welcome to do so, but please note uh, it'll take around, it'll give me at least 24 to 48 hours to respond to it. I do have other courses and I try to, you know, keep up with everybody, but, you know, uh, if you're looking for just an immediate answer right away within a minute, that's going to be a little bit too fast for me. And also I want to note for my own sanity, I learned very early on teaching online courses, uh, I will not be answering uh, emails that said after 5 p.m. So I do need to sometimes <laughs> to kind of check out of work and, you know, refresh it and so that I can come back. Just keep that in mind. Now, the course was what we're going to do here is we're going to give you an overall view of philosophy in general. So, of course, the semester, especially an accelerated semester, is far too short to cover everything that we can do in philosophy. Uh, philosophy is a very huge um, field. And so my job kind of in an intro class is to kind of give you a taste test of different types of philosophy you'll see out there. You know, so I kind of choose carefully and try to get a, a variety of different kinds of approaches to philosophy and different writers that give you kind of the general sense of what what is philosophy and what's out there, even though it's extremely large. So what I did is I chose this book. It's kind of a weird, unique book. It's from a reputable publisher, Oxford University Press, but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting because it, it goes away from the typical uh, sort of presentation of textbooks in the sense of just memorize these words and do these quizzes. Here it's actually engaging with a lot of original thinkers. So it's called Echoes from the Cape. It's by philosopher Lisa Gannett. It uh, was printed in Canada, actually. And so she tries to include a very inclusive set of philosophers um, than the traditional books I thought typically do. So I try to be more inclusive in my choices of writers. Now, what are you going to do for the course? Well, there's a number of objectives here. I want to be able for you to express yourself um, through writing, through your ideas, to be able to distinguish between opinions and facts, be able to inference. So this is what philosophy is about. It's really getting away from just kind of blindly, you know, making wild claims or opinions and really start thinking deeply about what we think and what we believe. So that does take some time and it takes some effort. So that's what I'm saying. You, we're going to slowly work on that and to kind of learn to articulate our thoughts into words and writing. And writing, writing is a skill. It's not something that just comes naturally. It takes time and dedication. So again, there will be a lot of writing assignments that will be doing that. So here we're going to talk about a number of different things. Philosophy of mind, philosophy of science, a lot of interesting stuff out there. So let's get to the nitty gritty, I think, which you, you can go through a lot of this on your own on the syllabus. 
with regards to methods of instruction. So, you know, web browsers, make sure that, you know, you have Adobe Reader that you can read PDF files. I will post those uh, up on Canvas a lot. So make sure your computer's up to date and, you know, your connection is good so that you, you can keep up with the class. There's some basic Medicaid rules as well. Um, so don't personally attack anybody, you know, um, be polite. You can't disagree with individuals. You, I'll try to open up areas where people can discuss, you know, uh, that week's uh, reading and you can get feedback and you can kind of like work together and help each other out. So this is an online course. Sometimes they very, tend to be very impersonal. So I want to try to kind of maybe personalize that a little bit more by allowing you guys to have discussions. But also keep in mind, do keep it, you know, uh, civil. Uh, but I do welcome uh, discourse. It's, it's really important that we also challenge each other's ideas, you know, in a constructive and right and polite manner. But, you know, learning is about learning maybe what we did wrong and how we can improve, right? So there's a couple of assignments that you're going to be doing. The first is a group PowerPoint. And I know a lot of people hate group work, but I think it's a necessary evil because you do have to learn to work with others, whether you like it or not. And almost any, you know, unless you, I guess, maybe live in a lighthouse or something on your own. <laughs> but other than that, for the most part, well, we do have to work with other people. We don't have to work in teams. We have to learn to get along and, and try our best. So it isn't difficult, but it's a necessary skill. And I think that's what I did with the PowerPoint. And I'll, I'll explain, you know, what you'll have to do with that in a moment. And also I want to point out that a lot of students would ask me, well, can I have copies of the PowerPoint? And what I kind of discouraged that for a long time was that, you know, it felt like students were trying to just avoid reading the book, right? You know, just make me a PowerPoint so I don't have to read the book. But that really isn't learning because those are all, PowerPoints are kind of like my own notes, right? And it's like, I'm just passing my own notes. So how do you know my notes are right? How do you know, you know, I did? Maybe you read it in a totally different way, the same text, right? Maybe you have your own ideas. So this is why I thought, what's a good way to help each other out online? And also maybe learn to put your ideas together and make your own notes. And so this is why I created a PowerPoint study. So what you're gonna do with your group, and I already designated the groups, and you'll be able to find your group very easily. All you have to do is go to people in Canvas, and then just click on groups, and you'll find your team and which group you're in just by going through the list. And there you're gonna be able to contact each other and work together on the PowerPoint. So what does the PowerPoint include? Basically, I'm gonna assign a particular uh, reading from our list of readings. So one group only half is responsible for only one week in the course. And so I divided it up into, of course, eight weeks, eight groups, right? So each group is going to work on their particular reading. They're going to develop a PowerPoint together, and then they're going to submit it. And then once I grade it uh, collectively, then I'll share it with the rest of the class. And that's kind of like how we're learning to build and help each other out. So that tells you when you make your PowerPoint, do so with the audience in mind. Who's the audience? It's your fellow peers. Make a good PowerPoint that you think will help yourself and others remember the material. So that's what you kind of want to keep in mind. Now, along with that is a report. Now the report is not a group assignment. It's an individual assignment that everybody will submit, but it's about the group. So your report is at the end of the PowerPoint uh, assignment after you guys work together and turn in the PowerPoint, you know, tell me, well, who was responsible for what job? You know. Who was responsible for the the introduction? Who was responsible for, you know, these pages or this? So I want to see how the work is divided up. And how I did that and to help you guys out is I 
created a template. So it's a form that's really easy for you to fill out. And so you'll see here in the individual report, a copy of the form where you're able to download it and fill it out. So you're gonna put your name, you're gonna put the chapter for the reading that you covered, your team covered, and what it was due. And the activity is completed. So what was, you know, what was to be completed in that assignment, uh, the task, how you divide up the work, who was responsible. So that's the group member's name and when it was due. So of course it's ahead of time, right? So if the PowerPoint is due on Friday, your team should have gotten it together before and say, well, you know, we need to do your part by Thursday, right? And so I want to see those dates, any issues that arose. And I'm sure there's plenty of issues that might come up, you know, where we haven't heard back from this member and this and that. Those are all to be included. I will take into consideration as I read them. And those are submitted, like I said, individually from each member of the group on their own. So that's not a group assignment but you're telling me what went on, you know, in that assignment. Uh, the PowerPoint, of course, is a collective assignment, and that's where you have one person submitted for everybody else. And that's what you'll do here. And so, well, when are you going to present? Well, remember I showed you right now, you go to people, and you find your group. And then if you scroll down on this paper here, it tells you which group, uh, is responsible for which topic and when is it due. So the first group is responsible for the cave allegory by Plato and that's on page eight. And then it's gonna be due on March 15th before 5 p.m. the PowerPoint. So keep in mind, take a look at the list and when your assignments are due. Speaking of, what else are you going to do in the course? Well, there's two types of writing of assignments that are going to constitute the majority of the grade. Your summary analysis and your applied responses. Now, your summary analysis is basically what it sounds like. You're creating a summary and an analysis of a particular reading. So I'll release that uh assignment on a particular date so on the 16th as you can see week one you're going to the assignment's going to open up it's going to be about that reading for that week and then you have until march 23 to turn in the assignment before 11 p.m so you can get feedback you can ask me does this look good am i on the right track anything like that before and again i have uh, clear instructions about what I expect. So I try and lay it out clearly what the assignments look like, what I expect for those assignments. So if you go to our modules, this may be the easiest way to navigate through. You'll see that I'll have in summary analysis section, there's the directions, and I also probably include that in week one as well, include the same link. And if you click on it, you'll see an explanation of the directions for a summary analysis. So the requirements checklist here are basic requirements that I'm looking for that you should complete. So are you using 12 point times new room? Is your page number in the bottom right hand corner? Is it double proofing? Make sure you're putting all that stuff in. That's why it's kind of a checklist before you turn it in. And if you get everything on there, it, you get two points out of uh, the 20 points, which are the total paper. Now that I broke it up into three sections, part one, you're gonna cover, well, what is the issue being addressed? And that's gonna be worth two points. Now notice, I wanted you to put it all together in paragraph form and have it as a nice complete paper, but you're going to be covering every question that's in each part. Now, remember, you're trying to communicate to an audience, you're trying to and essentially impress your reader, right? Which is me. So when you answer the question, well, what is the issue being addressed? 
you say, well, it's about Plato and then that's it. But that doesn't really cover it, right? You want to get a little bit deeper and say, well, what is Plato talking about? Why is he talking about this? Why is it important? You know, uh, what does the author have to say about it? How do they approach the, the subject, right? Those are all things that I'll be looking for. Uh, how does the author defend their point? So they have a particular position. Uh, philosophers are very opinionated. We're very precise about our positions and what we believe in. So what is the philosopher doing in order to show that they're right about this particular thought? Uh, how do they define their technical terms? So if they use big words you've never heard before in philosophy, like epistemology, metaphysics, which will come up, you know, how are they defining those words? Uh, how are they using that? Uh, I want to see that. And the third part is where you can choose one of the following, you know, uh, questions or issues that you want to put. So now you can raise your own discussion question. After reading that, what deep questions that you have related to what they talked about? Or you can find an objection to the argument and say, well, I don't really see their point or I don't believe their point because, you know, I don't think they thought about this or that. And that would be a really good response to that. A drawing connections with other philosophers' ideas that we cover. So saying, well, this paper, and this will come later, especially once you read some of the later papers, because I have where it's structured in such a way that the papers are connected to each other. So later you'll see a paper and say, oh, wait a minute, that's totally the opposite of what, you know, the previous philosopher was talking about. I was like, that was exactly what the previous philosopher was talking about. I like to see those connections. Or create your own argument on the issue. Those are all choices that you can make in um, deciding what you want to write for the third part. And along with that, I have a, an example that I've provided as well from a previous semester where I thought a student did a really good job. Of course, it's not about the same stuff that we're talking about, but to give you kind of an idea of, of what a good paper would look like, good something else. And so you're gonna submit that first one on um, uh, before March 23rd, before 11 p.m. And then our next assignment you'll notice is gonna be an applied response. Now applied responses are a little bit more complicated because what applied responses do, I wanna see that not only were you able to summarize and understand what you read, but then how do you apply it to the real world? How do you apply it to a real issue? And then those will be on a, on a heavier scale, as you can see with the assignments. Those are where collectively we're gonna have a couple of applied responses and they'll be each worth, well, I'm sorry, collectively they'll be worth 50% of your grade. They'll be broken up between those four. And the same thing with the summary analysis is collectively 30% of your grade, and then they'll be divided between those four assignments. So that really does compromise, uh, I would say comprise, not compromise, but comprise all the assignments that we're going to do for that uh, the semester. You're going to have a presentation, you're going to have your report, uh, a summary analysis for some of the readings, and applied responses for other readings. And that would complete it. So in an accelerated course, I decided not to do a final. I think that stresses people out. Rather, I want to see good constructive writing. And so I want to see improvement, you know. So by the fourth paper or fourth applied response of the fourth summary analysis, I want to see that you are improving, that you're really building on, you know, that your papers are getting stronger, that you're, you're starting to get the hang of it. That's what I'm looking for. So that's for the most part what you're going to be doing on the course. The grading scale is typical of uh, usual grading scale for courses. Um, as you can see with the schedule here, um, we'll have the readings. I'll tell you exactly what page number it'll be and what assignment will be to do that week. And you can always check back with the syllabus on the exact dates for all the assignments. So coming back to Canvas as well, you'll see I'll try to organize it. This is kind of a new thing for me. I'm deciding to organize it by week. I usually just have the assignments collectively. Some people prefer to go week by week. So I'm looking at reconstructing my course so that 
we can go by week by week. So the first thing you want to do is actually week zero. Week zero just means that we're going through an introduction. I want you to go to the welcome page uh, first. I want you to go through the structure of the course, take a look at the syllabus in depth. Uh, what you're going to need uh, computer-wise or technological you know, accommodations, anything like that that you need. Uh, resources, the Connecticut rules, being polite. Um, introductions, introduce yourself to the group as a discussion. And um, some of the details about the PowerPoints in the group assignment. So the first group, I know it's really abrupt. They're going to have to turn it in at the end of the week. Uh, but I'm here to help them. Um, here, actually, here to help everybody, of course. But especially those uh, who are starting at first week and as a group assignment. I hope uh, I can help you guys, you know, transition and quickly develop a good PowerPoint that you'll be proud of. And then as you see, week one, there's some basic the syllabus, there's a copy as well there. Some study tips, uh, they're not mandatory, but I highly recommend that you take a look at some of the study tips that I found online that I think are really good. And but not just for this class, but for any of your classes. Uh, there is a copy of the first reading that I've provided. I know people are getting maybe uh, a hard time trying to get a copy of the book, you know, it might be late or something. So I did provide the first reading of copy, but I can, of course, supply the whole book that would violate some copyright rules. So I do try to accommodate a little bit so you guys can get started right away and start reading this week. And then you'll see the first week, the agenda, go through that, and the modules. And we'll continue that without the semester, and I'll add week by week new modules. So I hope uh, you have a really fun semester. I hope you learn a lot, actually. This is the whole point of the course, right? Get really exposed to a little bit of what's out there, uh, new philosophies, new ways of thinking. And I'm here to help, like I said in the introduction, I'm your guide. And I'll, I'll try to help you through this transition. So I hope you have an excellent semester. And let me know. You're always welcome to email me. And I'm always uh, happy to help.